So, my wife is demanding that I sleep with her sister. Why? Well, it's a little complicated, but this story is crazy. Human beings can be really funny. Too funny that they actually become stupid. I've come to a point in my life where I choose never to let people's opinions move me. When you're rich and successful guy at the marriageable age but yet single, society begins looking at you like you're abnormal. Well, I'm far from an average background and so my parents helped in their only way to pave the way for me to become successful early on in life. I lived alone in the city where I worked at a law firm and by the age of 26, the only thing left on my to-do list was marriage which was not an issue, as I had Julia. Julia is my childhood sweetheart, and we've known each other for, like, ages. I could say that she knew me way better than my parents or siblings did. While I was 26 years old, she was 28. Yet Julia was two years older than me, and even though it didn't matter to us, most folks were not really comfortable with it. But there was nothing nobody could do about it. It's my life. We shared a lot of history together that made age irrelevant. Julia and I both got married and lived in the city. Our marriage went from one year down to two until it got to six years, and there was no issues yet. No child at all. Tongues began wagging. People within my family circle began labeling my wife as barren, while those who were outside the family either labeled my wife barren or claimed that I was not man enough for a child. I just wondered how it was anybody's business, how I lived my life with my wife. Of every problem that existed in the world, they chose to ask for mine, and my wife's child list is making their concern. If we decided to live that way, then no one was to choose and nobody else has an opinion on it. As time went by, my family members began pressuring me to send Julie away and marry someone else who was fertile enough to give me children. Up until then, Julia and I had not really taken the whole issue so serious because we just felt that we were still young and there was really no problem since our marriage was still at its infancy. But six years down the line, we decided to go for a medical checkup to just see what was going on, if there was a problem or not. Well, there was a problem and it was with Julia. Julia's womb was damaged. We were shocked, but then it was understandable. Julia had been with me for years, and we started having sex during our teenage years. She aborted a couple of pregnancies for me that would have brought some shame to not just her, but her family. And also to me, and my family as well. And who knows what kind of steps my parents would have taken against me. The realization of the problem did not dampen the love for my wife. Neither did it shake my resolve to protect her from the family and acquaintances who wanted her out of my home. Besides, I was the reason she had her womb destroyed, so why would I turn on her now? I made the decision to not tell my family and friends that their suspicions that my wife was barren was true. The whole thing, though, gave my wife great concern. Every married woman, most married women, would love to be called mothers at some point. My wife began seeing herself as inadequate for me. The whole thing was telling on her in our marriage. Our intimate life felt dry. She was getting detached from me emotionally, and when we did have sex, she was practically absent as she knew that nothing else besides the temporal pleasure which I got would result from it. I did my best to reassure her, if my undying love for help, but it was to no avail. I became frustrated trying to prove to her that I loved her. While we were single and so children or not, I would love her regardless. I was okay with adopting a child, but I never suggested it do that she would get the feeling that I was hellbent on getting a child. I was shocked when Julia woke me up in the middle of the night during this period to demand that I sleep with her younger sister, Judith, who would then give birth to a child we would take as ours. She had already discussed with her sister behind my back, and her sister agreed to the whole thing. I was not in support of it for various reasons which my wife just could not see. Julia held her sister in high esteem. She claimed that they both had their backs and looked after each other since their parents passed on, but I knew better. During our teenage years, Julia's sister tried severely and discouraging her from dating me. And when I even proposed to Julia, she claimed that I was not going to be a faithful lover to her over the years, 
as I would go for younger ladies in a few years' time. I admit to the fact that Julia's sister was beautiful, more beautiful than my wife, but she was a snake. She had character flaws that would make any man regret dating or settling down with her. The best they could do was spend money on her and sleep with her, as they had been doing, but no reasonable man would sleep with her and stay. What my wife did not know was that her sister Judith had actually tried sleeping with me on a few occasions. She even painted her sister bad in my presence just so that I would call off the engagement with her sister and get hitched with her. Naturally, I've told Julia, but it could lead to her into breaking up with me for trying to lie against her only sister and family simply because she turned down my advances. A lie which Judith could easily fabricate. I had to suggest to Julia that we go for adoption because sleeping with her sister just did not feel right. Well, it wasn't right. But Julia at this point did not care. She claimed she did not want people to know that the child which would be hers was adopted, and her sister, who was her only living family, would carry this secret to her grave. The proposal did not go down well with me. It further caused a rift between Julia and I, as neither of us would give in to the other. After days, and I mean days of guilt tripping, I finally decided to go along with her plan. Her sister came to live with us, and we sent word to our folks in the village that my wife was pregnant. The news silenced them as they had to eat back all the words they've spoken against my wife. Julia's sister took in three weeks after she moved into our house. We did our best to make her feel comfortable, but it always seemed as though she needed more attention coming to her from my end. She either needed me to massage her feet or do one thing or the other, which I felt was not really necessary. Well, long story short, she's now pregnant. And so there was no need for us to still have sex, but Judith insisted that it would help her with the delivery. She would even demand sometimes that I kissed and cuddled her. And when I tried declining, and they we're saying it's just not necessary... She would claim that a pregnant woman has cravings, which could seem odd most times. My wife was trying so hard to conceal her jealousy and would agree. So, I practically was living with two wives, who were both sisters. Judith finally put to bed a few months later to a baby boy that looked just like his father, me. The plan was for her to stay with us until the child no longer needed to be breastfeed, and that was going to take a little while. Well, it never really occurred to us that we were in trouble. Few months after the delivery, I took my wife and the baby to the village to see my people. They finally accorded my wife some respect. Of course, nobody questioned the birth, since the kid looked just like me with a striking resemblance between father and son. She started acting hostile towards my wife and would not let her touch the baby. She would insist on spending time with the child and myself, and because she had just been put to bed and all, my wife and I decided to let her have her way. I, on my own, had developed a certain kind of liking towards her, but it wasn't really love. I think it was a result of the fact that she was the mother of my son. So I naturally tended towards her and the baby while unintentionally ignoring my wife. An action that got my wife jealous and uneasy. Judith's plan all along was to take over what happened to her and her very own sister, her home, and she was gradually succeeding. It was not long before my wife became fed up about her sister's attitude towards her. She complained to me about it, and even though I was never and would never be in support of Judith if anyone takes my wife for granted, I had to plead with Julia to be a little bit patient with her sister, who would be leaving us oh so soon. Looking back now, I think I may have said so because I enjoyed having both women around. One was the love of my life and the other was the mother of my child. Julia tried as much as she could to accommodate her sister's stupidity, even though her sister just did not want to help the matters. Julia began regretting bringing her sister into her home. Her very own sister, whom she felt had her back, was actually plotting evil against her. No wonder she had initially rejected the money Julia had offered to pay her. She had other plans to collect payment through another means. Months finally passed and my sister-in-law was yet to leave the house. The child was old enough to do without breast milk, but Judith had decided to stay. 
At this time, her hostility towards my wife was too much that my wife and I had to take necessary actions to see if that we had peace. We called her, gave her a huge sum of money, and politely asked that she went back to her place. Well, Judith fled up. She began talking nonsense about not letting us use her to dump her. She insisted that she was not going to leave the house without her son. She used her son as leverage. Julia and I had to let the issue slide. Judith was sneaky. She had let me bond very well with my son as every father would so that she would always use my affection for him to bend me towards doing her will. Days went by and her ugly attitude continued to manifest. She competed for my attention with my wife and I thought long and hard on how to deal with the whole thing, but I could come up with nothing. I did not want to have my son taken away from me, but that meant that I had to put up with living with this mother, who was my sister-in-law. On the other hand, having my sister-in-law in the house meant that I could lose my wife at any point in time. I was forced to take drastic action when I returned from work one day to find my wife in tears. She had an altercation with her sister and her sister said some words that broke her down. She had called her Baron. I drove my sister-in-law out of my house and I had no option than to watch her leave with my son. As a father, it broke my heart, but I was equally a husband who owed my wife protection and stability. I did my best to hide from my wife the fact that I was affected by the departure of my son, but she knew it was all just a facade. She apologized for compelling to sleep with her sister, a move that had caused the both of us heartache. It was then I related to her my very reason for wanting her sister far away from us on the onset. She was shocked to learn that Judith had been making advances at me over the years. She understood my reason for keeping it mute, though. A few weeks later, we began receiving pictures of my son sent to our home. It was the handwork of Judith, who wanted to taunt me with my son. She knew that I missed him as every father would. Her quest for attention failed as I and my wife just ignored her. She finally showed up at her doorstep one weekend without my son, demanding money for my son's upkeep. We gave her a couple of thousands, which would take care of her and my son, but we tried reasoning with her just to let us keep the child as agreed. Our plea, it fell on deaf ears. Her visits became frequent until one day she came, not for money, but to demand that we let her back in the house, otherwise she's going to go to the village and expose the whole thing, after which she would leave with my son, and we would never see them again. We offered to pay her any amount of money she demanded, just to have her forfeit my son for us and go away and never be seen again. But Judith blatantly refused. She traveled down to meet my people with my child, my wife claimed to be hers. And Judith told them the whole thing. Judith's story was believable. She had my son as proof that she was telling the truth, but my people had to hear from me directly, so they reached out, telling me of the recent development, and asked that I came back to the village with my wife to clarify some things. The embarrassment was bad. Imagine going back to face my people again just to tell them that their accusation that my wife had been barren all this while had been correct. How would my wife look them in the eye and tell them that she had deceived them by plotting with her sister to give me a child just to hide her shame? How would they look at my wife and I after that? Well, the deed had been done by Judith, and so we were left with no option than to face it. We informed my people that we would be coming home in a month's time. The days moved by quickly as the time drew near. The day finally arrived when Julie and I made our journey down to my family's house at the village. My parents and siblings were all seated down in anticipation, with Judas in the midst holding my son. She was glad that she was going to witness my wife, who was her very own sister, being disgraced. They were all surprised as Julie and I walked in with the very beautiful baby boy. Before they could start asking questions and making comments, I confirmed all Judith had said to them to be true. I noted that their constant bugging and inconsiderate advice to ditch my wife had led us to this deceptive act. My wife may be barren, but fruitfulness had never been a yardstick for loving her. 
The baby boy that they saw us holding was a child we adopted recently. And as time went by, we were planning on adopting three more. A boy and three girls. After breaking the news to them, I then focused my attention on Judith. I reminded her that she and I had something in common, my son, and she had no right to keep me out of his life. I'm a lawyer, and I knew the law, so I promised to come for her legally. It would only take a matter of time before she screwed up, and the law deemed her unfit to raise my child. I'm going to give her two options. We could co-parent the child we have together, or we could legally battle her for custody. I made her a promise, though. Co-parenting our son would not mean living together in the same house, much less getting intimate in any form. She could be the mother of my child, but she would never be my wife. Julia and I left the place back to the city without giving my people the opportunity to either vent their displeasure or apologize for being inhumane to my wife. Judith, after a while, decided to go with the option of co-parenting as she could not take care of the child on her own, and it was clear that her plan had failed. My wife severed ties with her own sister, and we've been living in peace alongside our four adopted children, and occasionally my son. Okay guys, this story was a lot to take in. In my personal opinion, I would never do that if I was OP. I honestly can't believe OP did it because he was so against it to begin with. But besides all that, why are they trying so hard to impress their family in the village? It doesn't even seem like it should be their concern if they have a child or not. I don't know, I thought this story was crazy. Let me know what you think about it, guys. Drop it down below in the comment section. Tell me if you've had any family that's trying to get you to have a baby, and maybe you're not ready yet. Thanks for listening, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as there's going to be more videos every single day. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next one.